Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my week 35 wrap up. Now, because this week also went into a new month, I will have my stats in this video as well. Just to kind of set expectations, for this video I'm going to do my book wrap up, I'm going to do my writing wrap up, my other media, and then my stats. So then you, and I always chapter them so you can skip to what you are most interested in. Book wrap up. I was very much a mood reader and I picked up something that was not even known to me at the time. I know I've said this before, but I normally film on Saturday and then after filming I go to the library. And so I happened to get this next book from the library that day, and I decided I wanted to read it. And that is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. And this finishes her Monk and Robot duology. Though the way it ends, it is open to another one in the future. And this picks up with Dext and Mosscap as they are now entering back into Dext society and going to visit the towns so Mosscap can ask, what do you need to all of the humans? This book was written during the beginning of the pandemic with the stay at home orders. And I feel like it hits the big theme of that time. The beginning of the pandemic with the staying home was our chance to recharge our batteries, take a step back from all the busyness that we have going on and just let ourselves be evaluate our life and decide, are we doing what we want to do? What is what we're doing fulfilling us? And those are some of the themes that are touched upon in this book. We also get a little bit of the guilt that some people feel when they're not constantly being productive. One of the themes is the need that we need to allow ourselves the time to reflect and to relax. And our society really should be set up so that if someone has burned out and they need that downtime, we're not questioning them or putting pressure on them to perform in a way that is not actually helping their mental health. So the theme of this really ends up being sometimes it's okay just to be. Just to be yourself, be as you are. While I enjoyed the themes and messages in this, it wasn't necessarily something that I needed to be reminded of at this time. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going back and forth with Dex. I enjoyed getting to see more of this world to the point that I would like another one, but it definitely did not resonate as much with me as the first one did. And then I finished my reread of Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff. And I really am enjoying this more than I did the first time I read it. I think it helps that I've read this whole five book series and two of the following trilogy. And I just really like Torin Kerr. She knows her job. She's not apologetic of it. She's capable and knows how to work in a bad situation. And the decisions that she makes and that other people around her make are logical. And I really, really enjoyed this. I'm glad that I own my own copy. So that I can reread it whenever I feel like it. I've started other books, but did I continue reading them? No, no, I did not. Instead, I picked up more books because I could never have enough books that I am currently reading. So I ended up picking up Slaying the Dragon by Ben Riggs. This is a history book of the Dungeons and Dragons company. So how it was founded, and what happened with the different management. So this is actually a very personable biography. Ben Riggs is a gamer himself, and he's taken the time to go seek out people who actually worked at the company, not only the creators, and to interview them and try to get as much information. This is not going to be vilifying anybody. If that is what you're looking for, this is not doing that. What it's doing is laying out a full and complete picture as far as he can. I've just gotten to the Lorraine Williams starting the management of the company and he did mention that she did not agree to be interviewed and so not having her perspective does hamper the actual biography. 
However, he still is able to get a lot from the people who worked in the company during the time that she was in charge. I'm really enjoying this. I have never played D&D myself, but I've watched it and I've been very interested and I thought that this just would be a unique kind of nonfiction read. I mean, so far it's just showing the people who created Dungeons and Dragons and then ran the TSR company are human. They made some great decisions and they made some not great decisions. And I'm really enjoying this. And then because it's September, I thought there was going to be another official space opera September, but this is a gap year. But I'd already started collecting some space opera to read. I picked up Sevenese by Neil Stevenson, which I have heard is a space opera. It was on the Goodreads list further down, so I'm only a little bit into it. The chapters are really long, but unlike in Project Hail Mary where that was annoying me, everything that is in a chapter is thematically linked, so it's dealing with the same issue or the same theme. And I like that the chapters are labeled, so then you have an idea of what they're talking about. So, so far I'm enjoying this very much, even if I'm only a little bit into it. Just planning to like work a little bit at a time. And then I'm continuing to read like 10 to 20 percent of the books my group, Book Invasion, the judging team for the self-published science fiction contest, which has slowed my own novel reading, but I've found some books I'm interested in, and then I found some that I am not. And that was sad that I found my first nose that I was not interested in continuing. But that is how it goes sometimes is not everything works for every single person out there. And that's really what this first part of the judging is about, is just saying whether or not we would continue reading. It's not breaking down somebody else's work, it's would you continue reading? That's the question. For my writing wrap-up, I did write a little bit. I wrote the next scene for the Diana story that I've been working on, and while it has all of the information that I was hoping to convey in that scene, I'm not 100% happy with it, but I've written it, and that is always a good thing because I like revising and it can completely change in revision, that's fine. I got it out of my brain onto paper even if I'm not happy with it. This scene is one of the ones that are going to be setting up some of the through lines of character for Rachel and kind of hints at the big the a story that's going on underneath and so that's why it needed to be written and I had to be a little more technical with the information that I was sharing. So with the revision I'll be able to clean it up, put things more in the language of the character. It'll it'll be fine. I also attended the Pro Writing Science Fiction Week. There's one replay that I still want to go back and watch, but everything in that I watched was interesting. I enjoyed the interviews, just kind of getting to hear from authors and their perspectives. Some of the workshops didn't resonate with me and I guess what I'm needing at this time as a writer. They were informational, but not helpful to me at this point in time. That doesn't mean that they weren't good or might not be helpful at another point of time, but I felt a lot of them were, were very plot heavy, even though I, as one of the presenters talked about that the method that she was talking about, she's like, you can be a pantser, you can write it, and then afterwards use this as a guide to make sure that your story has hit everything and helps you know where to build things up. While in some stories I do write out of order, other stories I write in order, I don't look at the stories that way. Like typical story fashion, they talk about rising action or you have that incident that makes the character go off and do something else. There's a change in the world, midpoint, climax, all that. I don't look at the stories that way. I just look at them. Is somebody going from point A to point B in a logical manner? Is this really how this would happen? When they get there, is that going to work out how they are hoping or is something else going to affect it? That's how my brain works very interesting week. Great for somebody, I know. And then for other media, we got Disney+. Plus. I know we were probably one of the few people who had not done anything with Disney+. Plus. So I felt 
kind of out of the loop when everyone would be talking about shows, but that's okay. To be honest, we tried to get Disney Plus when it first started, but they didn't have their servers set up to handle all the business for that they were actually getting, and so we were never able to log in, so we canceled it and we never looked back. Also means then we haven't been able to keep up with some movies that we were interested that were coming through Disney. So we've decided to get it again, and we are now slowly catching up. And for me, that is slowly. My husband binge watches more than I do, so he'll probably catch up a lot faster on things. So I, what I told him is just watch whatever you want, and then when I watch it, if you want to rewatch it, you can watch it with me. I have started the Loki season because that was one of the things that was nominated for the Hugos, and I hadn't watched it. And I've watched the th first three episodes, and I'm enjoying it so far. The decor in the first one reminded me of the game Fallout. I've never played, but I've watched it played, and yeah, the like cartoon-ishness, but, but it's not quite a cartoon, that, that reminded me of that. Something I'm enjoying is just as I'm making guesses as I'm watching it, and then seeing which ones come to fru fruition. So far, I haven't been wrong, but that's okay. Part of the fun is guessing as you go along, as you put things in order, and I've been enjoying it. Also, for other media, I'm gonna count Worldcon, since I have been participating virtually and enjoying the panels that I have been watching. One of the great things about participating virtually is you get more of an international crowd of people in your panels, on, like on the panels and then in the comments as well. So for example, the, the first panel that I went to was cyberpunk and the international world. And so the three panel members, one was from Egypt, one was from Bulgaria, and one was from Japan. They're all talking about cyberpunk in their countries and how each one's a little bit different or have been focused on different things. That was just fascinating to see. I'm not a huge cyberpunk reader myself at this time, but it's something I've been interested in getting more into. I'm just more interested in reading widely from people around the world, especially in science fiction. It, I mean, it's not an official project, but it's something that I've had it kind of in my mind is I want to read a science fiction book from every country from an author from every country. If you want to be honest, a lot of the things that get translated into English aren't the science fiction. So I know that this is going to take me a long while, which is why it's more of a just me. But if you have any suggestions for science fiction writers in other countries, please let me know down below because I would love to add them to my list of people to check out. I'm really enjoying the virtual convention. The other nice thing about the virtual convention is um, the platform they're using does the replays right away. So there was one time slot that there were three things I really wanted to see. And I was only medium interested in things in the next time slot. So I finished one and then was immediately able to watch the replay of one of the other ones that happened at that same time slot. So it is kind of nice that I'm getting to see everything I really, really want to see virtually. And then also the announcement Martha Wells did at her reading that we're going to get another Murderbot novella next year. Yay! I'm excited. But yeah, so that's my other media wrap-up. And now I'm going to do stats. All right, so just to recap, my monthly goal is eight books a month, and this month I read 11. And the breakdown of that is five novels, two novellas, two short story collections, and two graphic novels. For the 2022 new releases goal is to read one at least a month. My total goals, I'd like to read 12. And this month with the new release-a-thon, I hit my goal. I have read 12 new releases now this year. I read eight this month. Just really fast, those were These Prisoning Hills, Tiger Honor, The Way Spring Arrives, Eclipse the Moon, Notorious Sorcerer, The Memory Librarian, We Only Find Them When They're Dead, Volume 2, and A Prayer for the Crown Shy. Now this one you might be a little bit more interested or confused about. For my Goodreads currently reading goal, I'm trying to get that number down, and I started the month with 159, and I'm finishing with 101. 
And no, I didn't read those books. I was waiting for something and I have the Goodreads app on my phone and so I was scanning through it and I realized I had books on there that I have never started reading and they all were, I would call them reference or history books for something at one point I was planning but I'm not planning to write anymore. And so I started removing them and that was a lot of books that brought that number down. So that's kind of nice. That makes that number not so bad, especially when I did add one to it. This, I think I'd actually brought it down to 100 and then went up one because I did add a book this month. That is why you have that big jump in numbers. I'm not going to keep a book on the list that I haven't actually started reading. I understand why I put it on there originally, but no, not, not going to try that now. Then for my physical TBR, and I started the month of August with 108 unread on my physical TBR. And then I went to a library sale. And I bought six more items. I bought six that I have not read. There was two that I had read. And then I realized one was a duplicate of something I actually already owned. My bad. But then by reading Eclipse the Moon, that was on my physical TBR. That finishes my month at 113. And you know, my goal for finishing series, I started this month with a 92 in progress series, 21 that are caught up. So this month with, I finished one of my series, which was the Monk and Robot duology. From official words so far, it it's only the two books. Of course, it, like I said, it's written open enough there could be a third, but at this time I'm not seeing anything to indicate that. I st started three series. Out of those three, one has more books that I can read at this time, and two of them I'm caught up because there's nothing else for me to read in this series. So I feel at least like, oh hey, these series are caught up. That number's going up as well as my series number, but still. So I think that I did pretty good this month for reading. I've been enjoying it, and I'm not gonna go and go on a walk with the grandbaby. Bye!